Not only because it brings together remarkable female leaders and brilliant minds from across Europe and Morocco, but also because it represents a key milestone in the flourishing partnership between the European People's Party and the National Rally of, Rally of Independence. More specifically, it highlights the strong and growing collaboration between EPP women and RNA women. This gathering is more than a symbolic moment. It's a reflection of our shared commitment for fostering dialogue, cooperation, and mutual empowerment. As women leaders from different regions, we are united by common values and goals, promoting inclusive societies, strengthening political participation, and ensuring that women play a central role in shaping the future of our communities. The bond between our organization is a testament in, to the power of cross-cultural collaboration and the, the belief that together we can address global challenge and create a more equitable world for all. As we embark on this academy, let's recognize its broader implication. It's a platform for exchanging ideas, forging stronger connections, and building a future where women are at the forefront of decision-making process. It's an opportunity to solidify the foundations of our partnership and to envision new pathways for cooperation between Europe and Morocco, answering that our work together continues to inspire and drive progress both locally and globally. For several years, this partnership has been strengthened around shared values, the promotion of women in society, support to their economic emancipation, and the defense of women, human rights. The collaboration between our two women's organizations, EPP Women and RNI Women, reflects a spirit of solidarity, mutual respect, and friendship that, dri that drive us together. Together, we have worked to build a framework for enriching dialogue and exchange, enabling our members to share their experiences and visions for a fairer and more equal society. Under the visionary leadership of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, Morocco has launched an ambitious pro reforms program that has positioned the kingdom as a model of sustainable and inclusive development in different areas. Significant investment in infrastructure and industry have bolstered Morocco's logistical capabilities, establishing it as a competitive industrial hub, particularly in the automotive, aerospace, and pharmaceutical sectors. The country is also leading an energy transition marked by groundbreaking initiatives in renewable energy. The new solar complex in Warsazat is a symbol of this. At the same time, the Kingdom of Morocco continues to place women's emancipation at the heart of its development strategy, with increasingly favorable legislation for their integration into the labor market and their participation in decision-making, these advances strengthen Morocco position, not only as a major player in Africa, but also as an example for many countries in the Global South. Another historical opportunity for Morocco development and for strengthening ties between North and South presents itself with the joint organization of the 2030 World Cup between Morocco, Spain, and Portugal. This major event is more than just a sports competition. It represents a powerful symbol of cooperation between three nations from the two different continents, uniting their forces to organize what will be a landmark moment in global soccer. Furthermore, the Morocco-Nigeria gas pipeline project is another flagship initiative illustrating Morocco's role as an energy and economic bridge between Africa and Europe. This pipeline, which will stretch for, for over thousands of kilometers, will link Nigeria gas reserves to Europe, passing through several African countries. The project, the first of its kind to be truly transcontinental, offers Europe a strategic alternative to strengthen its energy security while consolidating its ties with Africa. Morocco, as a key element of this project, once again proves its capacity to be a crucial hub for major structuring projects that foster dialogue and cooperation between Europe and Africa. The relationships between Morocco and the European Union is a crucial pillar 
in shaping our understanding of the neighborhood. neighborhood. Our strategy, multifaceted partnership, spans key areas such as security, economic development, migration, climate change, and many others. However, the time has come to refresh the framework of the European neighborhood policy for the South. The South is not turning its back on its south northern neighbor. The, the <coughs> to its neighbor, to, on its neighbor, northern neighbor. Rather, we are calling for a new cooperative dynamic that acknowledges and addresses the aspirations of southern countries. Morocco is prepared to assume its role as a strategic gateway between Europe and Africa, promoting collaboration founded on mutual respect joint development and shared prosperity. We must not forget that the Mediterranean, rather than being a divide, should serve as a gaining bridge between peoples. This maritime space, which often separates the countries of the North and South, has the potential to become a place of convergence and dialogue between both shores. As women leaders and activists, it's our responsibility to make this vision a reality by building bridges of understanding, responsibility uh, of understanding, cooperation, and peace across the Mediterranean. Our region, rich in cultural diversity and shared history, presents a unique opportunity to transform these assets into drivers of development and solidarity. In conclusion, I reaffirm the commitment of the RNI and RNI women to further strengthen this valuable partnership with the EPP and EPP women. Together, we can work towards building a more inclusive, united and prosperous future for our societies. The synergy of our efforts is crucial in addressing the global challenges ahead and paving the way for a world where women play a pivotal role in solving key global issues. Thank you. Il nous invite à une réflexion profonde et à une action concertée face aux enjeux qui transcendent nos frontières. Dans un monde en constante mutation, marqué par des bouleversements technologiques, des bouleversements environnementaux et géopolitiques, notre responsabilité est immense. Nous devons repenser nos modèles de coopération, nos approches du développement et nos stratégies de résilience face à ces défis communs. C'est dans ce contexte que j'aimerais aujourd'hui mettre en lumière cet aspect trop souvent négligé, mais je suis sûre que ici on en est toutes convaincues, qui est la clé de voûte de notre réussite collective. Le rôle central des femmes dans la résolution de ces défis mondiaux. Trop longtemps, notre voix a été réduite dans toutes ces discussions, les discussions sur la sécurité, sur l'énergie, sur l'économie et sur la démographie. Il est temps de changer la donne. Non seulement nous avons les compétences pour relever ces défis, mais notre contribution est essentielle pour y parvenir. En matière de sécurité, les femmes sont des actrices de paix essentielles, capables d'apporter une dimension nouvelle au processus de résolution des conflits. Les accords de paix, incluant les femmes, sont plus durables, sont plus inclusifs. Il est donc impératif que nous plaidions pour l'inclusion systématique des femmes dans toutes les discussions sécuritaires, de la prévention des conflits à la reconstruction post-conflit. Cette approche inclusive que nous prenons en matière de sécurité doit également s'appliquer à la transition énergétique. Et nous sommes fiers que la transition énergétique dans notre pays est portée au moins par deux femmes brillantes et engagées. Il est gratifiant de constater que le Royaume du Maroc a élaboré sous la conduite éclairée de Sa Majesté, une vision stratégique pour l'efficacité énergétique, fondée sur une concertation nationale, globale et participative, et conférant à notre pays les atouts nécessaires pour prendre place au niveau international dans la nouvelle économie verte, et notamment pour la filière hydrogène. Sur le plan économique, l'autonomisation des femmes est un autre levier de développement incontournable. Il est donc crucial que nous placions l'autonomisation économique des femmes au cœur de nos politiques de relance et de croissance. Plusieurs analyses réalisées à cet égard au niveau national ont révélé des constats édifiants. Elles montrent ainsi qu'une réduction totale de l'écart d'emploi entre les femmes et les hommes, en éliminant les nombreux obstacles à l'accès à l'activité, 
pourrait entraîner une augmentation quasiment de 40% du PIB par habitant. Aussi, le gouvernement du Maroc place la question de l'emploi, et notamment l'emploi des femmes et des jeunes, parmi ses priorités majeures pour la seconde moitié de son mandat. Face aux défis démographiques, le vieillissement de la population dans certaines régions et la jeunesse dynamique dans d'autres créent un paysage qui est complexe et qui exige des solutions novatrices. Dans les sociétés vieillissantes, les femmes sont souvent les principales pourvoyeuses, pourvoyeuses de soins. Les femmes sont également celles qui s'occupent des enfants en bas âge et sont amenées dans la plupart des cas à sacrifier leurs emplois ou bien leur carrière professionnelle faute de disponibilité d'infrastructures et de services de prise en charge d'enfants. Une étude réalisée par le ministère de l'économie et des finances a mis la lumière sur les gains en emploi féminin que pourrait générer la généralisation du préscolaire au Maroc, chantier qui est d'ailleurs en cours. Ce gain est chiffré à près de 50 000 emplois féminins supplémentaires. Cette réalité souligne l'urgence de repenser nos systèmes de protection sociale et de valoriser le travail de soins communs, donc le care economy. Dans les régions où la jeunesse prédomine, les jeunes femmes représentent un formidable potentiel d'innovation, de croissance. Investir dans leur éducation, dans leur formation professionnelle et leur accès à l'emploi est essentiel pour libérer ce potentiel. Les femmes migrantes, quant à elles, jouent un rôle pivot dans les équilibres démographiques et économiques de nos sociétés. Elles apportent des compétences précieuses, contribuent à la diversité culturelle et établissent des ponts entre les communautés. En reconnaissant et en valorisant leurs contributions, nous pouvons transformer les dynamiques migratoires en de véritables opportunités de croissance, d'enrichissement mutuel pour nos sociétés. Mesdames, Messieurs, vous n'êtes pas de simples observateurs de ces changements. Nous sommes, vous êtes les architectes. Vos actions, vos idées, votre engagement vont façonner l'avenir de l'Europe et de ses voisins, notamment ceux du Sud. C'est dans ce sens que la politique européenne de voisinage peut être un levier puissant dans cette transformation en favorisant une coopération accrue entre les pays du Sud et de l'Est, tout en promouvant des valeurs communes. Nous saluons aujourd'hui les acquis importants de cette politique de voisinage qui s'est matérialisée par un dialogue politique institutionnalisé avec plus de 15 milliards d'euros investis entre 2014 et 2020 à travers les instruments de financement diversifiés, bien que parfois complexes, et une, co une coopération multisectorielle qui est structurée. Nous saluons également la mise en place du nouvel instrument portant sur la coopération de l'Union européenne avec les pays de son voisinage, doté d'une enveloppe de quasiment 19 milliards d'euros pour les pays de l'Est et pour les pays du Sud, ainsi que l'adoption d'un nouvel agenda pour la Méditerranée avec la nomination prochaine d'un commissaire européen qui sera chargé de la Méditerranée. Toutefois, des efforts restent à faire pour atteindre véritablement les objectifs de cette politique de voisinage et notamment réduire l'écart de développement entre les deux rives et promouvoir les économies des deux parties. Ainsi, serait-il souhaitable que les instruments financiers soient davantage adaptés aux enjeux spécifiques de la Méditerranée et que les collaborations régionales se développent dans des domaines prioritaires que sont la gestion de la ressource hydrique et la transition énergétique, la transition numérique à travers des mécanismes intégrés qui évitent ainsi la dispersion des fonds. Beaucoup d'initiatives, je pense que concentrées sur au moins ces trois secteurs pourraient vraiment apporter des, des résultats beaucoup plus euh, probants. Au Maroc, nous nous félicitons du partenariat Maroc-Union Européenne, qui est solide, qui est pérenne, et qui s'est déployé à travers des axes importants, tels que la sécurité, l'économie, le social, l'environnement, ou encore la migration. Mais nous sommes également décidés à optimiser l'opportunité que constitue la révision de la politique européenne de voisinage, pour aller ensemble sur des terrains d'avenir, qui constituent des chantiers prioritaires pour le Royaume, tels que la transition digitale, la transition énergétique, la croissance verte, la gouvernance de l'eau ou encore les secteurs de la santé et de l'éducation. Un autre chantier d'envergure, l'organisation de la Coupe du Monde 2030 avec l'Espagne et le Portugal, appelle également à l'exploration d'un appui financier spécifique pour les projets d'infrastructures structurants 
à réaliser dans ce cadre. Ainsi, l'initiative atlantique de Sa Majesté le Roi Mohamed VI, que Dieu l'assiste, qui favorise l'accès des États du Sahel à l'océan Atlantique, pourrait également faire l'objet d'un soutien de l'Union européenne, qui jouerait un rôle clé dans le développement économique et dans la stabilité de cette région. Enfin, nous soulignons le, la nécessité de concrétiser rapidement la coopération avec le Fonds Mohamed VI à travers le soutien aux investissements privés. Les États ne peuvent pas seuls, on va dire, euh, réunir les conditions de la croissance économique. Le secteur privé est structurant dans cet élan et nous avons un instrument qui est, on va dire, financé en grande partie par l'État, qui peut être une belle opportunité aussi de mieux faire euh, travailler les économies ensemble. Mesdames et Messieurs, je tiens à réaffirmer l'engagement du Maroc à être un partenaire fiable, un partenaire dynamique dans cette réflexion commune. Malgré un contexte difficile, le Maroc a su non seulement maintenir le cap de ses réformes, mais aussi initier sous l'impulsion visionnaire de Sa Majesté le Roi que Dieu l'assiste, de nouveaux projets transformationnels majeurs qui se distinguent tous par leur ambition d'améliorer durablement le niveau de vie de l'ensemble des citoyennes et des citoyens, sans distinction aucune. Pour conclure, j'aimerais rappeler qu'ensemble, nous pouvons bâtir un avenir où la diversité démographique est une force, où l'égalité des genres est une réalité, et où chaque femme, qu'elle soit jeune, qu'elle soit âgée, migrante, native, peut réaliser son plein potentiel. Cet avenir repose sur notre capacité à créer des sociétés inclusives, où les compétences des femmes sont pleinement valorisées, reconnues, intégrées dans tous les aspects de la prise de décision. Je nous souhaite des échanges fructueux et l'émergence d'idées novatrices ou la collaboration entre les femmes de l'Europe et ses voisines du Sud, ses voisines de l'Est, devient un modèle de coopération internationale. Et je vous remercie. Before we begin, I would like to express a belief that uh, is deeply personal to me. I firmly believe that true women's uh, emancipation can only be achieved through financial independence and education. These two pillars are essential for empowering women to shape their futures, contribute to their stories, societies, and unlock their full potential. Uh, in Morocco, in the last uh, two decades, uh, we, saw, we witnessed remarkable progress in advancing women's rights, thanks to the visionary leadership of His Majesty uh, King Mohammed VI. We have seen uh, transformative changes in education, healthcare, and legal rights. Women are increasingly t uh, taking their rightful places in various sectors, uh, from politics to business. For instance, As of 2022, women now represent 41.22% of employees in the public sector. And the number of women in leadership roles has reached 85.44%. Furthermore, the proportion of women in decision-making positions within the administration has grown from 16.21% in 2012 to an impressive 28.17% in 2022. These figures demonstrate that the progress is tangible. But despite the strikes, the journey is far from over. Many women continue to face challenges that inhibit their full participation in society. As activists and leaders, it is our duty to confront these obstacles head on and advocate for a society where every woman can thrive. On an international scale, the challenges facing women are significant. The World Bank's uh, Women Business in the Law uh, uh, 2022 report highlights a, sober, a sovereign reality. Approximately uh, 2.4 billion women of working age still do not enjoy equal economic opportunities. In the, middle, in the Middle East and North Africa, while we have seen some improvements, we cannot ignore the legal barriers that persist. We must raise our voices and demand action to dismantle these barriers, ensuring that all women have access to the opportunities 
Thank you, Zeros. Economic em emancipation is not just a goal, it's a necessity. Investing in women is an investment in our collective future. We know that economies thrive when women are, un uh, and are empowered. It's no coincidence that the, UN, that the United Nations chose this year's theme for International Women's Day as investing in women acceleration progress. More than ever, achieving gender equality and ensuring women's well-being in all aspects of life is essential if we want to create a pro uh, prosperous economies and healthy planet. However, we face an alarming annual deficit of $360 billion in necessary spending to achieve gender equality by 2030. This is a call to action. We must advocate for policies that prioritize women's economic participation, support female entrepreneurship, and create an environment where women can contribute fully to our economies. The family unit is the, the bedrock of our society. As we saw yesterday in the presentation, our government uh, strongly believe in the crucial role of the family and uh, the role it plays in, in the empowerment of women. Uh, this current uh, government has made significant efforts, not only for women, but also families. By placing the family at the center of our efforts, we can create nurturing environments that empower women and girls. Our goal is to ensure that every child grows up in a society that values equality, respect, and opportunity for all. The partnership between Morocco and Europe are crucial in our fight for women's empowerment. This European Autumn Academy simply ex exemplifies our collaborative spirit and our shared commitment for, to fostering change. As Mrs. Doris Pack said during a previous summit of Erinai Women, if Africa suffers, Europe suffers too. This underscores the importance of working together across borders by exchanging knowledge, sharing best practices, and leveraging our respective, uh, exchanging, uh, sorry, our respective strengths we can create a powerful network that supports women's empowerment on a global scale. This partnership can pave the way for policies and initiatives that promote equality, inclusivity, and sustainable development for women in both Morocco and Europe. When we continue to explore uh, new avenues of, for collaboration, our shared commitment remains a glimpse of hope for future generations. In conclusion, I urge all of you to remain steadfast in our mission. Let us be the change makers, the advocates, and the champions of women's rights, and build a future where every woman in Morocco and beyond has the opportunity to, fulf to fulfill her potential and live a life free, free from discrimination and inequality. Thank you so much. And uh, so we are uh, uh, a people that love to host. We uh, like sharing and we like uh, to uh, show you our hospitality, our Moroccan hospitality. So EPP, uh, Women Europe and Ereni today are celebrating their friendship and their solidarity. And I'm happy to be part of this process, thanks to our president, Mr. Aziz Akhanoush, and chief of government. And thank you to also our chair lady, Madam Amina Belkhadra. And thank you to all our ministers, uh, women ministers in our government, uh, being taking the time to be with us uh, today. So as you all mentioned, and I'm not going to repeat it again, that women's issues are central to our uh, agenda. And this is why since 2017, our president, uh, Aziza Khanoush, understood it swiftly by naming and appointing Madame Amin Abul Khadra, who did a huge uh, work to gather this fantastic woman coming from North and South, East and West, to share experiences with you. It was not an easy task because I was part of the uh, board as a, a board member before this uh, baby was born, uh, this uh, woman's uh, 
for the Moroccan Women's Federation. And I can see how fast and how swift and how strong they all worked on a daily basis to come and uh, be part of this fantastic work. So together we can be stronger, together we can go faster, together we can reach the sky and go even uh, farther and higher. And uh, only high is, is the sky, like Americans like to say. So it's all about sharing and it's all about caring. And each one needs to reach one. And each one needs to teach one. And this is one of our priorities today. So. Uh, I have one message to tell you because I was uh, said that I only have one minute to speak. I didn't prepare anything, so I'm speaking to you about my heart. So one thing you need to take with you today is we all need to stand up, to speak up, or to shut up. And we're not going to shut up, we're going to speak up. And I will be back this afternoon and tomorrow to see all the topics we're going to, say, we're going to share together. Thank you for listening and uh, see you around. It's an honor for us uh, to be here and I will start to say thank you for your hospitality from the bottom of my heart. We admire uh, your country, your people, uh, the women's solidarity and the women power of Arani uh, women. And uh, uh, starting with this, today, uh, uh, yesterday uh, now uh, we will proceed to open our uh, autumn academy. And uh, let me uh, tell you, um, uh, welcome to the European Autumn Academy for Leading Women, an essential uh, and important event dedicated to debate some of the most important issues, as uh, other ministers and Madam President uh, said, for the shaping Europe's future. This autumn we will focus on highly important themes and we will gather it here to debate, to analyze and to give a solution uh, possible solutions, steps, what we have to make, action plans, what we have to build in our uh, continent and in the uh, African continent because indeed uh, Morocco is the bridge between uh, Europe and Africa. And thank you that uh, we can be here and we can think, we can work, we can dream and we can act together. We will debate uh, security and defense in the rapidly changing world, Europe's security as well as that its neighbors is more fragile and, uh, uh, than ever. Conflicts, hybrid and uh, cyber threats uh, put pressure on uh, our ability to maintain peace and stability. The security and defense challenges require innovative solution and, and cross-border, cross-continental cross, uh, collaboration and cooperation. Together we must find answer to the question as how can we strengthen security partnerships with our neighbors? What measure do we need to protect our citizens and democratic values, including from threats such as cyber attacks and terrorism? The global climate uh, crisis is affecting all regions, including Europe, uh, southern and eastern neighborhoods. Climate change, no, no borders. Demand urgent and immediate and collective action. At the same time, transitioning up to sustainable energy, uh, energy sources and reducing dependence of the traditional energy resources are priorities on the European agenda. How can we create sustainable solution to address these challenges? How can we build a green and resilient Europe while also supporting our neighbors in this process? Europe faces major, major demographic challenges. Aging population, migration, and democratic, uh, demographic uh, disparities among member states create economic and social imbalances. قبل ما تخرجوا ما تنسوش تابوناو في لاشين يوتيوب وبارطاجيو الفيديو وديرو جيم وتابعوا الدار على مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي